Hey everybody, Spooky Marshmallow here. And today, instead of doing a movie review, we're gonna try something a little different. I'm going to talk about a person. Marjorie McCall, or known as the lady that was buried twice. Let's get into it. Also, she was known as the lady with the ring. The central feature of the story is that a woman is buried while wearing a valuable ring. Shortly after the burial, a grave robber dug up the body with the intent of stealing the ring. The robber is unable to slide the ring off the woman's finger, so he prepares to cut off the finger with a knife. However, upon making the initial incision, the woman awakes, surprising the grave robber. The woman had not been dead at all, but had been the victim of premature burial. Times were hard in the 1700s, and people made a penny wherever they could. Some trades were frowned upon, and rightly so. One such trade was that of the resurrectionist, also known as a grave robber or sack -em ups These unsavory types provided cadavers to the many private medical schools throughout the UK, and at the start of the 18th century, business was Booming. Probably the most famous of the practitioners of this trade were Burke and Hare, who found infamy almost 100 years later. Their notoriety wasn't really due to their grave robbing, but more to do with their fresh supply of corpses to order. They were both originally from Ireland, but they met in Edinburgh, and where they went on to supply students of anatomy with more than their quota of cadavers. The resurrectionists weren't unique to Edinburgh. In Ireland, surgeons were prepared to pay a fair price for the newly deceased, and this provided employment opportunities for the local sack -em ups This practice was, however, to prove a hair-raising experience for one such band of grave robbers in Lurgan in 1705. Marjorie McCall was wed to a doctor. They lived in Church Place, Lurgan, Lurgan County, uh, our country... Uh, and by all accounts, they were very happy. When Marjorie fell ill, her husband John was beside himself with worry. In the early 1700s, many illnesses were considered minor today, but could have been fatal back then, especially fevers. It was a great catch-all for many of ailments. You, one person catch a fever, they could possibly die. Sadly, Marjorie succumbed to her bout of fever and was buried in Shankle Church of Ireland Cemetery, not far from her home and church place. She was hastily buried for fear of the fever spreading, and that should have been the end of that. However, she was to become one of the most famous women in Lurgan, and is still talked about today, obviously. There was quite a lot of commotion at the wake concerning a valuable ring that Marjorie was wearing. Many of the mourners tried in vain to prize the ring from her fingers, perhaps because they anticipated the possibility that grave robbers would desecrate Marjorie's resting place in order to steal the ring. Yeah, they wanted that for money. Let's be real. Due to her husband's inability to remove it from her finger, which had swollen considerably since her death, but news of the treasure leaked out to the sack -em ups They spotted the opportunity to gain themselves a bonus. After the wake, which was traditionally an attempt to avoid premature burial as the family of the deceased would sit and watch over the body for a few days to see if the person awakened, Marjorie was duly interred in Shankill Graveyard. That evening, before the soil had time to settle on Marjorie's coffin, the grave robbers paid a visit. Working under cover of darkness, they grappled in the dirt until they reached and opened her coffin. True to the rumor, the ring was still on her finger. Before removing the body, they attempted to take the valuable item, but it wouldn't budge. Being businessmen, they weren't about to allow such a prize to make its way to a surgeon's slab, and since she couldn't get any debtor, they agreed to cut off her finger to free the ring. As soon as blood was drawn from Marjorie, she came to revive from the coma-like state 
or swoon she had fallen into. She sat bolt upright, eyes wide, and wailed like a banshee. There was, there are differing reports as to the fate of the body snatchers. One report states that one of the men dropped dead on the spot from fright. The other is that they both ran for their lives, never to resume their dubious occupation. Whatever the truth of the matter, it's pretty certain that they'd never have forgotten that little misadventure. The bold Marjorie helped herself out of the ground and stumbled the short distance to her home. At her home, her husband John was sitting with their children and relatives, bemoaning her passing and toasting her journey to a better place. When the door rapped three times, John, still racked with grief, exclaimed, If your mother were still alive, I'd swear that was her knock. And sure enough, upon opening the door, John was confronted by his late wife, dressed in her burial clothes, dripping from her almost severed finger, but very much alive. John's response is disputed, but most tellings of this story agree that he dropped dead on the floor. Now there's a quandary, joy and sadness in equal measure for the rest of the family. Marjorie alive and relatively well, but John deader than Marjorie ever was. He was buried in the plot Marjorie had recently vacated. Marjorie went on to remarry and have several children. Although it is rumored that she left the grave pregnant by an unspecified suitor, when she did finally die, she was returned to Shanko Graveyard, and to this day her gravestone still stands. It bears the inscription, Lived Once, Buried Twice. She is still remembered by the townspeople of Lurgan today, and it's said that on occasion she can be seen wandering Shank Hill Cemetery, perhaps looking for those who wronged her. Creepy story, isn't it? Also, it's true. It is a true story. Now, back in the 1700s, it was common for people to be buried prematurely. For some strange reason. I mean, there was a number of ailments back then that would put people in coma-like states and they would stay that way for hours, sometimes days. There's an actual um, medical term, but I can't think of what it is right now on the top of my head. Um, but it is something that was kind of common back in the 1700s and people were getting buried alive left and right and that's when they invented that belt and I'm sure that you've seen tons and tons of YouTube videos about it or movies whatever about the bells that they would place on top of the grave and the person that was in the coffin the string would come down to them so that if they were buried alive they could pull that string the bell would ring and they could come and dig the person up that's a true story that actually happened, y'all. Yeah. Crazy, right? I think we live... People think we live in crazy times right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, I find it very interesting that here it is, the 1700s. And people, like I said, needed to do anything for work to get money. And here's all these people at this funeral trying to wedge a gold ring off of a dead woman while pretending to mourn. How disgusting and sick is that? See, people haven't changed. I could I could really see that happening in today's world. Sad but true. I'm just just putting it out there. Sad but true. I could see that happening in today's world. Yes. Oh, Aunt Martha, I love you so much. Yeah, I could see it happening. Um but so that how cool is that like she when I first found out about the story like in my head I'm picturing Uma Thurman and Kill Bill where she like um fights her way up out of that casket and she's coming up out of the ground like I'm picturing that part <laughs> in my head while I'm reading this <laughs> and who knows maybe she took revenge like Uma did <laughs> and uh yeah, and, you know, beat the holy heck out of the grave robbers. I doubt it, but... And I believe that the grave robbers probably just ran for their lives. You know, the, the sack-em-ups just 
vacated the the area. That's what I believe. I don't believe that they dropped dead, and and I don't believe that John, her husband, dropped dead either. Um, I mean, the shock maybe because you know there is a shock or a, a saying that you know the shock killed him. It could very well have happened. Yes, I just. Um, I don't know, I guess in today, because, you know, we're so used to modern medicine and everything, like, I just picture him, like, fainting. Not actually dying, but just fainting. But, who knows? I mean, he he really may have died. I don't know. <clears throat> um, however, I do feel that it, the story is interesting that when she did pass, um, finally, for the second time, that, um, that she was pregnant... Um, that's kind of sad, but, um, I don't know. I just, that whole story just seems interesting to me, especially the fact that it's a true story. That is scary, crazy, scary, crazy. So <clears throat> this led me down a rabbit hole. Um, so I'm going to be doing an upcoming video on the Rufus Cantrell scandal. Apparently back in Indianapolis, my hometown, uh, there was a gentleman back in the early 1900s that uh, was a grave robber. Uh, he was supplying cadavers to medical facilities for money. Uh, and I guess that something happened. I'm not sure exactly what the scandal is because I didn't even know this was a thing until today. Um, and apparently in Fishers, Indiana, they have a... Um, like a historical marker marking a spot uh, that, that tells about him. And it says um, the grave robbing scandal of Ru Rufus Cantrell from Indianapolis. And I'm like, what? So I am going to go down that rabbit hole and I'm going to do some research and I'm going to do a video about Rufus Cantrell. Like he's supposed to be like this famous grave robber. He's a famous sack him up. Uh, Sorry, I like that turn. I, I just, <laughs> I just found it funny. I, uh, dark humor. But anyway, so I'm going to be doing an upcoming video on that here pretty soon. The Rufus Cantrell scandal. Uh, I'm very curious. I can't believe like I've lived in Indianapolis my whole life, which is a very long time, but I'm not going to give away my age, but let's just say it's a very long time. Uh, and I never heard about this and I thought I knew all the crazy weirdo things that happened in Indiana what little of them um but this is new to me so I'm very interested in this and I cannot wait to dive into this story you guys and do some research I am I'm very excited about this I tried to find some pictures of Marjorie McCall or some sketches or something that somebody may have done for this video so you could look at that instead of my face but I couldn't find anything. All I could find was um, pictures of like um, sack em ups, but it was like all web page pictures. So I couldn't really do anything with it. So there's that. So anyway, um, that's the basis of the story. And I believe I first learned of the story uh, on the show Beyond Belief. Is it Beyond Belief or Unknown? Something like that. It was one of those travel channel shows that I like to watch all the time. Um, hosted by um, Dan Wilder. And um, I saw it and I was like, oh wow. Like it, it was so interesting to me. And I immediately wrote it down and I was like, okay, I need to know more about this. And here we are. So that is the story of Marjorie McCall, the woman who died twice. Um, it's crazy, it, crazy, or who was buried twice. Um, it's so interesting. Um, I, I just can't, like, I don't know. It was a common thing back then, but why her story was so, um, reached me so much, I don't know. But anyway, so definitely give it a check out if you're interested. Just Google it. I'm, um, I found most of my information on from Wikipedia but a lot of it too was was just the notes that I wrote down from watching the show um so yeah look it up go to your local library there might be some articles or um some books even about Marjorie McCall um go to your local library and and that's a thing that I want to bring up too <clears throat> um 
and I'm not sponsored by libraries or anything like that. I don't even know if that's a thing. But anyway, I want to say this, and I'm serious by this, um, because I myself have started doing it. Even though we live in an age where it's so easy to just pull up Google to find the answers to things, there's the, a great reference place where everything is in print. I mean, yeah, there is some things online, yes, but if you want real facts, go to your local library, get a library card, check out books from the library. Seriously. I have started doing that. I have a library that's literally on the corner of my neighborhood and they know me there. Yes. I have a horror book club that I go to once a month, my husband and I. Um, and, and yeah, we live in a small town, sure, but libraries are everywhere. And I'm telling you, it's worth it. You can find so much information by visiting your libraries. Yes. So definitely remember that get away from Google. We need to get away from Google. What would happen if the internet just died one day and we were not able to research anything? What if Google went away and Bing, you know, in all of those search engines, what if they just went away one day? Would you be able to survive? I could, but I'm old. <laughs> but that's what I'm trying to say. Like, we need to get back into being more, you know, um, book savvy, I guess you could, is the word that I'm looking for. Um, but yeah, check books out at your local library. Definitely. All right, that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you for staying around. If you stayed around listening to me blab on and on throughout this whole uh, video, I do appreciate it. And our subject today was Marjorie McCall, the woman that was buried twice. Um, and like I said, you can find more information about her, I'm sure, on Google, but you might find more at your library. So this is Spooky Marshmallow saying, remember, stay spooky, my friends.